Hello and welcome to Planet 40k, how's everyone doing? Today we're going to be reviewing and discussing the Transcendent Catan from the Necron Codex. There's not many units left to cover guys, so we will start to do some more tactical videos as well as the rating updates. If you have any suggestions for some of our Necron content that you'd like to see, let me know below in the comments section. I'll probably be diving into some list building videos for each dynasty, as each dynasty does play quite differently so there'll be some units that are better suited than others, depending on your dynasty code. Anyway, that's future talk, back to the present we've got the Transcendent Catan Shard. An elite option that comes in at 14 power level or 270 points, so is your budget Catan Shard, as the other guys are at least 350 points. Now these Catan Shards are limited to one per detachment, so realistically you're choosing the one that you like the most. Jumping into his datasheet then, we've got the keywords of note first of all, so he's a character, he's a monster, and obviously he's a Catan Shard, and he carries the fly keyword too. Stat wise he's got movement of 8 inch, weapon skill 2+, plus, ballistic skill 2+, plus, strength 6, toughness 7, wounds 9, attacks 5, leadership 10, and a 4 plus save. So when you compare this to one of the other Catans, say for example a Deceiver, it's got one less attack, everything else is mirrored, so not too bad. Ability wise, Enslave Star God, like the other Catan Shards in the Elite section, he cannot benefit from the Lookout Sir ability or carry a Relic or Warlord trait, so we kind of expected that one. He does have Living Metal to regain a Lost Wound each turn, which is quite helpful. Then he's got his Necrodermis, so he can't lose more than three wounds in a given phase, which is really good, so he won't be getting shot off the board in a single turn. Now we can still take three wounds in each phase and technically die, three in the Psychic phase, three in the Shooting phase and three in the fight phase, then potentially any other random abilities that score mortal wounds in other phases. But in general he should be fine for a while and with living metal to recover a wound it's not too bad. He's then got reality unravels so he explodes like a vehicle would on a 4 plus and units within 6 inches suffer d3 mortal wounds. Then he's got a unique ability which is the fractured personality ability. So this one is carried out pre-battle, you select an ability listed in the table or you can select randomly and then take two abilities, although they have to be different abilities. So let's check out the six options. First one is Cosmic Tyrant. So at the end of the movement phase, if the model has not fallen back or advanced, it can use an additional Katan power that it knows, and it cannot use the same Katan power more than once per turn. So we will go over the Katan powers later in the video, but he does know two, and it can only cast one of them. So with this, he'll be able to cast both. The second is Immune to Natural Law. Each attack that is made against the model, any unmodified wound roll of a 1, 2 or 3 will always fail, irrespective of any abilities the weapon of the attacker may have. So a bit like transhuman physiology for the space marines there, not too bad. Number 3, Sentinel Necrodermis, which gives him a 3 plus save instead of a 4 plus save, which kind of matches what the Void Dragon currently has. Number 4 is the Transdimensional Displacement, which gives him the Dimensional Translocation ability which is effectively Deep Strike, which is an ability that only the Deceiver has. So this is another strong one because it's going to get him right up the board very early on without the risk of taking wounds on turn 1 either. Number 5, Untamed Power, which gives him an extra attack so he'll have an attack characteristic of 6 and also his strength will go up to a strength 7 which then matches what the Nightbringer has. So all three of those named Catan Shards are kind of in this list in bits and bobs. Number 6, Writhing Worldscape. At the start of the moon phase you roll 1d6 for each enemy unit within engagement range of the model. On a 4+, plus, that unit suffers one mortal wound. In addition, each time a unit declares a charge against this model, until the end of the phase you subtract 2 from their charge rolls or the unit. So not too bad, probably not the best one there, number 6, but all in all they're all pretty decent. So you could chance it with the Dice Gods and take two abilities if you're doing it at random. I think I personally want the Cosmic Tyrant, which is the first ability, just to get an extra Catan power going off each turn. So as for those Catan powers then, the model knows two, can't advance or fall back in order to use them, so they will be used in the movement phase. Now as standard he can use one of the Catan powers, whereas all the other Catan shards can cast two powers per turn, as already mentioned he can only do one, unless of course you take that Cosmic Tyrant ability. So there's six Catan power options here, the first one is Antimatter Meteor. So this one is where you roll a d6 and on a 3, 4 or a 5 the closest enemy unit within 24 inches and visible will suffer 3 mortal wounds and on the 6 that enemy is going to score d3 plus 3 mortal wounds. So this one's really powerful, it's virtually like casting smite and rolling a 6 on the d3 roll for the damage and it's even got the potential of doing 6 mortal wounds so it's a solid choice, probably one of the best choices there. Number 2 is Time's Arrow, you select an enemy unit within 18 inches and visible, you roll a d6 and if the total equals or exceeds the wounds characteristic of any model in the enemy unit then that model is going to be destroyed. So this one can target characters 
So you want to be targeting elite units or HQ units that are between two and four wounds on their data sheet. Note that the wounds and damage is not being caused here, so any rules that ignore damage or wounds cannot be used against this power. Number three, Sky of Falling Stars. So you select three enemy units within 24 inches of the model, then for each of those you roll a d6. On a one, two, three, four, or a five, if the dice result is less than the number of models in the unit, then they suffer d3 mortal wounds. More easy mortal wounds, because a lot of units in the game are min squads of five or less so the roll should be pretty easy against those. And again, it's got the potential of doing nine mortal wounds if you can get three targets. Number four, Cosmic Fire. So you roll a d6 for each enemy unit within nine inches of your shard, and on a four plus, that unit suffers d3 mortal wounds. So this one's quite similar to the previous one, except it's not limited to three units, but only has a nine inch range. If you plan on getting really close by, it's gonna do pretty well, as you'll be catching a lot of units within your nine inch bubble, and then doing d3 mortal wounds a pop. So number five, Seismic Assault. You select an enemy unit within 18 inches and visible to your Catan shard. You roll a d6 for each model in that unit, and on a six, the unit suffers one mortal wound, to a maximum of 10 mortal wounds. So this one's your anti-horde power. Units of 24 models or more, on average will score four mortal wounds, so this is where it becomes a little bit more useful. So save this one for the horde armies. Then finally, you've got power six, transdimensional thunderbolt. You select one enemy unit within 24 inches and visible. Unfortunately, this one doesn't work with characters that have got nine wounds or less, if it's within three inches of any enemy unit. Unless, of course, it's the closest enemy unit. You roll 1d6, and on a 2+, plus, that unit suffers d3 mortal wounds. Then roll 1d6 for each other enemy unit within 3 inches of the first unit. And on a 4+, plus, they suffer a mortal wound. So this one works well if your opponent's grouped up a lot of their units together. Some factions, such as Tyranids, like to do this because they want to be in synapse range. So this is going to be quite effective against them in particular. So he doesn't have his own unique Katan power like the others do, but he still packs a punch with the generic power. So that's all the Catan powers dealt with, we've yet to still check out his war gear. So a transcendent Catan is equipped with Crackling Tendrils, which is a melee weapon, it's strength user, making it strength 6, minus 4 AP, and the damage is D6. So he comes with 5 attack space, but with one of the fractured personality traits, he can go up to attack 6 and with strength 7, but for this breakdown we're going to go with the base stats of strength 6 and 5 attacks. So 5 attacks that hit on 2s, average 4.2 hits. With that strength 6, is wounding the majority of infantry gun 3s, giving you 2.8 wounds on average, which should go through armor because it's minus 4 AP, or it'll put them on inbun saves. The D6 damage is unpredictable, but if you're against those infantry models, then you don't really need to roll too high. A 2 or more will kill a marine intercessor, a 3 or more will kill a terminator or a plague marine, and for those death guard terminators, you're going to need a 4 plus. Now failing these rolls is really going to eat up your wound pool, so against the more elite units you probably do need to roll high. First the weaker units such as Hormagons, then you're wounded on 2s, giving you about 3.5 dead models a phase. Against anything toughness 7 or higher, you're going to need 5s, but still manage 1.4 wounds on average going through. And if you roll well on the damage, it can do pretty well. So he's not too bad in melee, not as powerful as the name Katan Shards, and he's not meant to be because he's cheaper. And as already mentioned, you can buff his stats with the ability if you wished. So moving away from that, there's a few stratagems there that you can use on your Catan Shard. Firstly, the Strange Echoes for one CP, where you can swap out one of his Catan powers for another one that he doesn't know yet. Now, at first, this might appear like a bit of a waste of CP, and you think, why would you want to swap them? Now, firstly, you may have actually randomly rolled for the power, so you might want to swap them because that would make sense, you may not have got a great power. Or secondly, once you get your Catan Shard within 9 inch range, you may want to use a better Catan Shard power that hurts more units within close proximity, such as Cosmic Fire, which hurts everyone within 9 inch range. That's just one example, I'm sure there's lots of situations where positionally your Catan is in a far better position to use a different power, and for only one CP you can switch it out. Another stratagem is called Dimensional Destabilization, which also costs 1 CP if he's not Titanic, which he isn't. You look at your powers of the Catan Shard table and roll a d6. Then you use that corresponding power, even if it's already been used that phase. Then you get to use it, of course. So it's a really good stratagem here, especially for the amount of mortal wounds that you're dishing out each power. It's going to really start to hurt your opponent. The third and final stratagem in the list is Entropic Strike. It costs you 2 CP, and you simply remove your opponent's inman save for the phase. So this is fantastic. It makes sure your minus 4 AP really is minus 4 AP. So tactically speaking, it needs to be in your opponent's face nice and early. Now he does have an 8 inch movement, so he could go on foot, but advancing him will remove the Catan powers for the turn. So think carefully whether you want to advance him or not. But you may be out of range of the Catan powers anyway. There is a risk of being shot off the board by turn 2, 
Even if you can only lose three wounds per phase, you still have that risk. You need to be darting in and out of obscuring cover if possible. Now he can't benefit from the lookout, sir, so he really is on his own here. Alternatively, you can stick him in reserves. It's going to cost you two CP, and then you'll still have five power left over, so you can stick in some other units because you can total it up to 19 power for the cost of two CP. And it's not like the game is going to give you change, so you may as well stick something else in with him. Once out, you need to think about how you're getting your 270 points back from the game. That's the key here. If you can't remove 270 points from the game, he's not been worth it. So before entering the battle or running up the board, scan the board and see what you can target. Maybe you can tie up multiple units or get hold of a big monster or vehicle. Either way, between the melee weapon and your Catan powers, your goal is to clear 270 points. I personally think if you're going to take a Catan shard, then you're just better off going for one of the other elite choices. The Void Dragon or the Nightbringer in particular are both very effective with their damage output alongside the two Catan powers per turn. Then the Deceiver can also be used for his tricks, for getting a bunch of other units into reserves or just redeploying them. Okay, they do cost you 80 to 100 points more, but if you're investing that amount for a Catan shard, then you may as well go all in with it. The issue with all four is ensuring you make your points back. Now the others are more likely to achieve that, whereas if you go half-hearted with the Transcendent Catan shard, then you're playing an even more riskier game with your points. Now they don't really directly synergize with the Codex, but you could pair a Catan Shard with a Plasmancer, which will make it a very chaotic game, especially if that Plasmancer is the Veil of Darkness and brings in some bodyguards such as Lichguard to protect both himself and the Catan from combat. Meaning the only way the opponent can actually remove your Catan Shard is by shooting it and possibly smiting it, but losing only 3 wounds per phase will keep him upright for a lot longer. Then the dual combination of lots of mortal wound carnage can be quite a joy to watch. So to summarise the good points, it's a cheap method of getting a Catan Shard in the list, the Fractured Personality ability adds flexibility to modify your Catan any way you want to use him, has indirect synergy with a Plasmancer which is pretty fun, he's got a 4 plus in one save and only loses 3 wounds per phase, and he's not bad in melee too. As for some of the bad points, he's still a pricey model even though he's the cheaper option, getting your points back is a huge risk, He's got no ranged weapons like a Void Dragon does, and he's only got one Catan power built into his day sheet, which can be upgraded to two, but then you're using up his ability. Then finally, I think the others are just a better investment, as they're more likely to get their points back in the game, and they just do twice as much. So for today's rating, I'm going to be giving the Transcendent Catan a Planet 40k rating of 2.5 out of 5. <laughs> Let me know what you'd rate him in the comments below, drop those likes on your way out, and thank you all for watching, we'll see you in the next one.